Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to Tan in this channel. And today we got my friend Brandon from Hello. Singapore. Nice yeah. to meet all of you. Do you want to say something about yourself, your background in tennis, and what you do right now? Uh, I've been playing tennis for about 10 years now. Yeah, so in Singapore, I string rackets, sell some equipment, sell some pro stock rackets, which I brought here for Tan today. Okay, and today we got this. The Blade Pro. Is it the Blade Pro? It's H22. H22. Yeah. So it's a Pro Stock, right? Yeah. H22, and we have a 16 by 19 and 18 by 20 to test for. So, what's the difference between the H22 and the Blade Pro? Okay, the Blade Pro, they have the same mold, but the H22s, they generally have a lower stiffness rating. So, okay. we're looking at around 61 RA for these. And for the Blade Pro, probably about 65 on average. Yeah. Okay, so the Blade Pro, they made it for retail? Correct. So easier the... easier power. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you know the spec on this thing? The swing so, weight that you got? Okay, so for the 1820 today, we have um, roughly about 328 swing weight, I think, with Torbite okay. uh, 1.2. Torbite Soft 1.2. And then for the 1619, slightly heavier spec, a bit more weight in the head because that's how it that's how it comes spec. Mm -hmm. Probably looking at around a 335, 336 swing weight. Static weight on both is around. Uh, we have no lead in the handle for this one for the 1619, so we're looking at a static weight of about 320, 323. Mm -hmm. And then for this one, probably about 330 with some weight in the handle. Yeah, that sounds playable for me. Yeah. Okay, the setup on both rackets is a Lingo Tour by Soft 1.2 at 47 pounds on the main and 45 pounds on the cross. Brandon is kind enough to let me do any setup that I like, so here we go. I got it strung at the new tennis shop in Bangkok, located at Noa Tennis BKK around Sukhumvit area, right in the heart of the city. They have a wide range of tennis equipment for sale, first and second hand, stringing services, and many demo rackets that you can try. The owner is also a racket holic, and he knows a lot about tennis rackets and equipment. So if you come visiting Bangkok, definitely check it out. I will put the link and the Google map in the description below. First, let's start with the H22 Pro Stock 16 by 19 First impression, well, I can say that even though it looks like a glossy Blade V8, it's not a blade. It doesn't play like a blade at all. I think of it like a softer Pro Staff. It has a lot of feel at contact, a lot of spin, and high launch angle. Compared to the blade that is muted, not very spinny, and has low launch angle. The H22 is a bit softer than the blade V8 as well, and it's very arm friendly because of the flex. However, I don't feel like it unnecessarily flexes like a Clash or a Gravity MP. It's still very stable at contact. The swing weight is high and it takes a lot of effort to swing. The sweet spot is small, of course it's a pro stock racket, but you know exactly where you hit it on the string bed. I would say the racket is under power in general, but it's a bit tricky here because at the sweet spot, it can generate a lot of power and plow through, but you need to swing fast. So the good thing is, it doesn't matter how much power you put in, if you can generate enough racket head speed, you will get all the control you want. The ball will land deep, but still inside the baseline. And the spin is, well, very good I would say. The downside is though, uh, I think it's really hard to control the balls at low racket head speed. It's very strange racket. So I'm extra tired playing with this racket because I feel like I really have to go for it on every shot to get the pace and the control that I want. Otherwise, the ball could go anywhere. It could land very short or in the net or fly out to the fence sometimes. The shot I like on this racket is probably my backhand. I feel like I can really hit it with a lot of power and it's even easier than on my Retail Blade 98. The string bed feels more pocketed, less body, and the ball really goes toward the target. The forehand is okay, but for me it's a bit difficult to deal with like high bouncing ball. Like I have to put extra effort to generate power and spin back 
and with this high swing weight it's very exhausting on the run forehand also feels like a reach to me i think the h22 can deal with the low balls and any balls in the comfort hitting zone very well but you need to time it right i really don't feel very comfortable with hitting late with this racket it's really hard to control the outcome the backhand slice also feels solid but i would prefer the frame with higher stiffness more than this soft and flexi mode the touch shots and ball blockings don't feel very good i think the open swing bed give me a bit too much it always give extra than what i want so my summary on this H22 16 by 19 is when I don't swing at all, just blocking or punching the ball back, it's a bit bouncy. When I swing slow to medium, it lacks power, spin, and control. But when I swing fast, it gives me everything. On the serve, very easy. A ton of power on the first serve and easy to go with slice and kick on the second serve. So what racket are you using today? I saw you bringing some today, rackets here. We're using one uh, Graphene Touch Speed MP. This is the sort of the mold that Yannick Sinner uses. Okay. Even though he lost yesterday. But <laughs> um, spec'd up to his specs, so about 324 gram static weight and 340 swing weight. And then the other one I've been using is uh, this is called a Wilson P25, painted as an Ultra, but this is the racket that is close to what Borna Chorich is using. About 338 swing weight, 317 gram static weight. Cool. Both with restring zero, one at, both at 54 pounds on restring zero. Mm. Yeah. Now, let's get to the H22 18 by 20. Well, I gotta say I prefer this one to the 16 by 19. One thing is, probably it has a lower swing rate, so I can play better with it. But overall, I think the H22 18x20 is a more well-balanced version of the 16x19. Actually, Brandon also brought me a Regna 98 to play test as well, but I will put it in a separate video. If I have to say which racket has magic in it, I can say it is definitely this H22 18x20. The feel is exceptional. I think it's even softer than the 16x19, but it's more solid and stable. It has a very unique flex and pocketing feel, especially at the sweet spot. I don't know how to explain this because it's really subjective, but it does feel good. I think the sweet spot is a bit larger than the 16x19 as well. I don't know why, but it's a bit easier to play, to play and to hit with. This H22 also has power and a lot of top spin for the 18x20 pattern. The good thing is, I think the launch angle is more consistent than the 16x19 version that could either go high or low on specific shots. Well, this one is more in the middle most of the time and that translates into better depth control. Overall, I think it's a better package. Remember what I said about power generation on the 16x19? That medium swing speed doesn't work. Uh, the ball blocking could be a bit trampoline. Well, it's not the same with this one. The medium racket head speed works uh, just fine. Yeah, it's a bit under power compared to like retail rackets, but I can play with it just fine. Ball blocking, continental grip also has more control over it. Meanwhile, uh, the fast racket head speed full stream body rotation forehand still feel totally in control so yeah i think it's a well balanced racket on the spin it really surprises me how much top spin this racket can generate i think it's on par with the white owl 1820 which is a lot uh, but i think this racket can generate higher pace and ball speed when really swing out it's a very dynamic racket the control well, uh, I would say control for power is top shelf for sure. I don't feel like there is any shots that I swing right and the ball lands out. But yeah, it's still an unforgiving pro stock racket that doesn't allow you to hit late. So when I didn't swing right or didn't make 
uh, a perfect contact. I think the racket is not compromising with me. There's a high percentage that it will be a straight unforced error compared to retail rackets like a Blade 98, White Owl 1820, the E Zone, the Pure Arrow 98, or even a Pro Staff. I still think that those rackets would still put the ball in play, even though you didn't make a perfect contact point. On the serve, well, it's almost as good as on the H22 16 by 19, but uh, the second serve is a bit more difficult to generate spin on the balls. Uh, the service return feels okay, I don't have that much comments on it. The net game and touch shots feels good, uh, no issues so far. The backhand slices uh, don't feel the best, still too soft for me, but I can leave it in. In summary, well this is the first time I play with the H22 and now I understand why a lot of pros are using it. It's a really good racket that gives you everything, especially the 18x20 version. However, for recreational players like me, it's fun to play with this racket from time to time, but probably not the one I will use on a daily basis. I can say that it consumes a lot of energy to deal with. I feel like I have to swing faster than normal to unlock the potential of the racket, and the swing weight is no joke. I think I will make a separate video on the H22 18x20, trying different setup and see how it goes. Also, Brandon said he will let me know if he can find one that has lower swing rate, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.